Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we'll have our lesson number 102. As I explained to you yesterday and on day number 100, that beginning with day 101, yesterday, day 101, we started vocabulary words out of this book here, the RN pre entrance exam. Even though it is RN pre-nursing exam, as I explained to you yesterday, the vocabulary words are vocabulary words. The vocabulary words that we're going to learn in this video will help you improve your score regardless of which exam you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or SAT or SAT or any, any of these exams. It will help you improve your score because these words are used. You will encounter these words. They are used in almost all of these exams. Let's begin, shall we? Enough of the talk. The words that we're going to learn today are going to come from the section that you see, again, if you happen to have the book, because you're preparing for this particular exam, that's great. You can turn, turn to the page where we are, page number 29. If you don't have the book, just follow me. Follow the work that I'm going to do on the blackboard. The very first problem that we have, it goes something like this. It says, number one, it says, all of their complaints, all of their complaints were trivial. And then he goes on to say, their complaints were blank. And our job is to pick one answer choice among the four that are given to us, a synonym, a word which is a synonym of trivial. And right answer among the answer choices is petty. What does petty mean? Well, petty means exactly what it says. Petty means trivial. Petty means tiny, insignificant, Insig insigni insignificant. small, and as we said before, trivial. Petty is the word. One might talk about one might talk about petty grievances. You have grievance, you want to complain about something, you're not happy about it, but the other person views these your grievances of yours as petty, as childish, trivial, minor, uh, min uh, minor uh, insignificant. They are not they're not serious grievances. We have petty grievances. One might talk about, as we said here, petty complaints. That means you complain about small stuff, tiny stuff, insignificant stuff. One might talk about petty crime. Petty crime. A petty crime would be a crime that is, uh, that is not very serious, that is not very grave. Now there is a word in English language which means just that, a word which means petty crime, a minor crime. Do you know that word? Should we learn it? Just learn it, shall we? A petty crime is called, a petty crime is called peccadillo. P-E-C-A P-E-C-A D-I-L-L-O Peccadillo Dillo. Peccadillo is a minor crime. A minor crime. Minor crime. A minor offense. A minor offense, a minor crime. Uh, driving your car with one of the headlights gone is a minor crime. It's a peccadillo. Going on the highway at 120 miles an hour is no longer a, a, a minor crime, it's no longer peccadillo, it's a serious matter. A, a crime that is serious, a, ser a crime that is grave, serious, of serious nature, would be called, which would be the antinom of peccadillo. Antinom of peccadillo, of course you know it, antinom of peccadillo is felony. A felony is a it's a huge crime, a big crime, a big deal. Let's move on to number two. So again, the words that we learned here were petty, which means minor, insignificant, trivial, 
And from that we had this digression, you know, petty crime is called peccadillo. Question number two. Question number two, they go on to say that she missed, she missed nine days in a row. She missed nine days in a row. Her absences, her absences were, and the correct answer is, consecutive. A simple word, I know, I understand that, consecutive, which means, this first pronoun, pronoun pronunciation, con, sec, con, sec, you, do, consecutive. Consecutive means coming one after another in a row. Coming one after another in a row. Or if you like, it means without, without interruption. What part of speech is consecutive? Consecutive would be an adjective because we are describing something. Her absences were consecutive. What's the adverb? The adverb would be consecutively. 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 Let's move on to number three. Question number three. It was a simple one, wasn't it? Before we move on to question number three, so that was the right answer. Before we move on to question number three, three, let's look at a couple of other words that we have in the answer choices. When I write the words, I know you would say that it's a simple word, but trust me, we are going simplest with it. Just trust me on that. Two C. The word is obsolete. As you can see, it's a very simple word. Obsolete. Lead. It's an adjective. If something is described as being obsolete, that means it's old fashioned. It's old fashioned. It's out of date. Old technology. It's out of date. No longer in use. As, I, as, you, as you can see, it's a simple word. Why are we covering it then? What is the reason behind it? Everybody knows the meaning of the word obsolete. Do you know the adjective? But this, this is an adjective, but on the form of the adjective, on the form of obsolete, you can say that something is obsolete, or you can say something is, it has two forms. This is one form, on the form is obsolete. Obsolescent. You can say it's obsolete or you can say it's obsolescent. Uh, so, obsolescent. Uh, obsolescent. The question is, what is the noun of it? Do you know the noun? That's where that's where the tricky part comes into. Of course, everybody knows the word obsolete. It's simple word, as I said. What's the noun of obsolete? And if you think you know it, pause the video and think about it for a second. The noun would be You see how I'm lining up the letters? Obsolescence. Ah, uh, so less, you see, ah, uh, so less uns. Instead of aunt, instead of aunt is ants. Obsolescence. Obsolescence. That's the noun of obsolete. There is a word in answer choice D that I would also like to talk about. Again, it's a simple word, but what I want to find out is if you know the noun of that word. Let's take a look at it, shall we? So again, one more time, the word is obsolete, noun will be obsolescence. In answer choice D, in 2D we have delete. Of course everybody knows it what delete means, simple word. But look at this, look, look, look at the pronunciation delete, which is an adjective, or oh, which is a verb. What's the noun of it? Do you know the noun of it? The noun of delete would be and it changes the pronunciation. D 
deletion deletion delete deletion make a deletion that means delete something I would like you to make a deletion delete this second line I would like you to make a deletion get rid of the second line similarly same pattern you will observe the same pattern in many other verbs for example insert insert what's the noun of insert the noun of insert would be insertion in sir shun you see the same pattern shun insertion and see uh, insert insert insertion here's one more see if you know this one omit and the noun would be so this is the verb this is the noun omit is a verb what's the noun of it the noun of omit would be oh this is wrong the noun would be omission o mish an omission i would like you to omit second paragraph make an omission omit omission delete deletion insert insertion so that was number two let's move on to number three again these might be simple words but simply knowing the simple word is one thing knowing other parts of speech of the same word is another thing don't just learn the word ask yourself what well, if it's a verb ask yourself what will be the adjective of it what will be the adverb of it how would i use it in different contexts how can i use it as an adjective how can i use it as a noun simply knowing the word a verb is not enough no delete is one thing knowing the word deletion is another different thing deletion omission insertion let's move on to number three in question number three, it says, her, her instructions, her instructions were, her instructions were clearly stated. They were, they were, and here's the, here's the answer choice. They were. Legible. Ledge. Can you rewrite it? The first level is ledge. Oh, that's the second level. Legible, which means something that can be read. Something, something that can be read. Easily, and here the word will be pronounced read, not read. Something that can be read easily is said to be legible. Something that cannot be read easily is said to be illegible. The antonym would be illegible. Cannot be read. His writing, I find his right. His writing is. His writing, his writing is atrocious. His writing is atrocious. I find it, I find it thoroughly illegible. I find it thoroughly illegible. His writing is atrocious. His writing is horrible, terrible. I cannot read it. I cannot read a single word. He has written here. His writing is absolutely atrocious. It is illegible. I can't read it. It cannot be read. Let's learn it, shall we? Atrocious. Let's learn it on the top. Atrocious. 
that something it means something that is extremely bad something something that is extremely monstrous because this is an adjective this is an adjective monstrous is the adjective of monster a monster is said to be monstrous it's, a, it's, a, it's an adjective of it's, it's the noun of, of monstrous would be monster his handwriting is monstrous it is atrocious it means something that is extremely evil or cruel if something is extremely evil or cruel it's said to be atrocious it's an adjective it is an adjective do you know the noun of atrocious the noun of atrocious would be a cross e t atrocity atrocity the adverb would be the adverb would be atrociously atrociously synonym would be a synonym of atrociously synonym of atrocious would be Abominable. Let's learn it. Let's, let's put it in the black book so we can both learn it properly. I'm trying to say it too fast, which is exactly why we put the pronunciation. The word here, a, bam, and then there's an a here. A, ba, a bam, a, no, bo. Abominable, something abominable is so called because it is terribly bad. Something that is something that is terribly bad something that is something that is horribly bad something that is something that is exceptionally bad something that is exceptionally bad his behavior at the party was abominable he behaved abominably he behaved abominably because he was drunk. He was stunk drunk. He was completely drunk. He drank too much. He behaved abominably. Abominably, his behavior was abominable. His behavior. His behavior was abominable. He behaved. He behaved. Abominably. Let's see what else do I have. Let's move on then. We're going to move on to question number four now. That's it. I keep looking here because I forgot to bring my tea with me. I left it upstairs. A nice hot cup of tea and it's just sitting there getting cold. The next, next question is question number four. It says, it says the referee was not unbiased. Referee's job is to be unbiased. He was not unbiased. He took, he took, he took sides. He played favorites. He was, he was, and here's what we have to pick the word, an answer choice among the four answer choices that are given to us. And the correct answer choice among the four is, let's learn how to pronounce this one, shall we? That's an A. That's an A. The word is par, par, t, zan. The referee was partisan. He was not. He was not unbiased. He was biased. Partisan means to not be neutral. If you're partisan, you're not neutral. Uh, it means to take 
size to play favorites. If you play favorites, you're not being biased. You're not being unbiased. You're being biased. It means to be biased. To be biased. And finally, to not be. To not be. Disinterested. Do not be disinterested. We learned the word disinterested on day number 21. Vocabulary. Day 21, we learned the word disinterested. Where that's where we learn the fact that disinterested and uninterested. If we put on the on the top, the part, the next part that we're going to talk about, that's the word partisan is the word. This is the word we're talking about right now. People who do not know any better, they go around using the word disinterested and disinterested and uninterested are not the same word. Uninterested means you're not interested in something. If you're disinterested, if a person is described as disinterested, that person is neutral. Disinterested means neutral. Neutral, unbiased, not taking sides. The referee was disinterested. Of course he was disinterested. That is his job. It is his job to be disinterested on the field. It is also his job to be very much interest to be very much interested in what is going on in the on the field. Just like the judge in the courtroom, it is judge's job to be very much interested in all the proceedings of the court and at the same time he is required to be thoroughly disinterested. He cannot be uninterested. He has to be interested in what's going on. He cannot fall asleep. He has to be uninterested and at the same time he has to be interested rather. He has to be very much interested in the proceeding and at the same time he is required to be disinterested. He is required to be neutral. These are not the same words. These are not the same words. Before we go to the next part I want to I want to talk about something else. Let's see if I can find it. It was somewhere else I wrote down. If I can find this bloody thing. There we go. They are not synonyms. They are not synonyms. Again, as you can see, it's a very simple word, synonym. Why are we putting on the blackboard? There must be a reason for it. Everybody knows the word synonym. Synonym is a noun. They are synonyms. They are nouns. Synonyms are nouns. Synonym is a noun. Do you know the adjective of it? The adjective of synonym would be synonymous. The pronunciation changes quite a lot. The word is C non a mus. One more time. Synonyms and synonymous. Synonymous is the adjective. These two words are not synonymous. They are not to be used. They are not to be used. They are not synonyms. They are not synonyms. Disinterested and uninterested are not synonyms. They do not mean the same thing. Uninterested means you are not interested. Disinterested means you are unbiased and neutral. They are not synonyms. They are not to be used synonymously. See, non, a, must, li. They are not to be used synonymously because they are not synonyms. Do you understand? Don't use, don't confuse the two. They are two different words. Don't confuse them. Let's move on. The last word we want to learn is in 4C. We need the room. We need the room obviously, we need to erase anything. One more time, disinterested, uninterested. Neutral, unbiased, not taking sides. Oh, here's a good word. Good. Uh, one, two, three, let's put one more here, four. Impartial. Impartial. This is a tricky word. Partial is the word. If you're par partial is two meaning, partial, one meaning of the word partial is part of something. Part of something. 
I would like to make a partial payment. My payment is due today. I'm supposed to pay $300 on my loan. I don't have $300. I'm supposed to pay you $300. I don't have the entire $300. Would you please allow me to make a partial payment, which means part of something. If, if you use that way, it is the adjective of a part. Part is a noun. I would like to make a part of the payment. I would make, like to make a partial payment. Another, word of the word, another meaning of the word partial is not to be neutral. Not to be neutral. If you're partial, you're taking sides. You're not neutral. You're not disinterested. But if you are disinterested, if you are neutral, if you are not taking side, you are impartial. One is, one is said to be impartial if one is neutral, unbiased, disinterested. Disinterested and impartial are synonyms. Impartial is an adjective. Do you know the noun of it? The noun of, uh, of impartial would be impartiality. A judge is supposed to show impartiality, neutrality, unbiasedness, disinterestedness. Those are all nouns. He's supposed to show disinterestedness, impartiality, neutrality. I forgot the fourth one I said. Unbiasedness, neutrality, unbiasedness, disinterestedness, impartiality. Those are all nouns. I don't know if I need to write them on the blackboard or not. Oh, let's carry on then. <coughs> Here are the nouns, if you like. Disinterestedness. Neutrality. Neutrality. Unbiasedness. Impartiality. Now they are all nouns. These are all noun found. Impartiality, disinterestedness, neutrality, and biasness. Let's move on. The last word we have in number four is, which is also choice 4C, is impertinent. What's the word? Impertinent. Im. Per. Ter. Impertinent. Which is an adjective. If one is described to be impertinent, one is being rude. One is being rude. It means to be rude. To behave in a rude manner. To be, to be arrogant. To be ill-mannered, to be ill-mannered. If one is ill-mannered, that's M-A-N-N, -N. I don't know if you can read my handwriting, M-A-N-N-E-R, manner, mannered. If you behave in an ill-mannered manner, if one is behaving in an ill-mannered manner, in a rude manner, in an arrogant manner, one is said to be impertinent. What an impertinent fellow. That's the adjective. The noun would be impertinence. A good synonym of impertinent would be insolent. In so Insolent. And the noun will be insolence. That's all I have for today. So that was question number four. In this particular section that we're doing, the verbal part of the exam, this particular section has 30 questions. We have done four of them in this video. So we're just going to do a few at a time until we finish the section. And once I finish this verbal section, we're going to do the math section. So if you are preparing for the RN nursing program and you're preparing to, for the entrance, entrance exam, we will not only do the verbal part, but we'll also do the math part. I want to finish one section. We'll do one section of verbal, one section of math, and so on. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.